habits hinder communication with God. Now, I go back to marriage because I'm such an expert at it. <laughs> but we all know you don't have to be, you know, whether you've seen your own parents or, you know, you're in a relationship now, you know that communication is probably the main key as to why there's a lack of intimacy between husband and wife. Talking. I know guys get the rap that we don't want to talk. Women talk too much. I just, that's working out. I'm not saying that. I heard that. I'm not saying that. But we know this. There's got to be constant communication between both parties, correct? The same with us and God. Seeking Him daily. Knowing Him. Seeking Him in prayer and communicating with Him. Not only do we bring before Him our burdens, but we open our hearts to listen to what he has to say to us in his word. To make sure we are growing to be the kind of men and women God desires us to be. You see, in our intimate relationship with the Father, communication is the key. How badly do we really want to know God? Hold your place there in 1 John and turn with me to Philippians chapter 3. Because Paul kind of lays out how badly, how desperately, how urgently he wants to know Christ. If you want something bad enough, you work for it. Your life reflects that. I mean, people that, that want to be the best in sports, I mean, their diet, their, their, their athletic training, to a T, their whole life reflects the goal they have. That's anything. Well, that ought to be how we see our relationship with God. Wanting to know Him intimately. Having that desire. Well, Paul lays out to us in Philippians, beginning in chapter 3, verse 7, he says the following. But whatever it was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ. And be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God is by faith. Now note verse 10. Paul says, I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death, and so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. Paul says he wanted to know Christ. And it's not a matter of just knowing of what Jesus did. Paul says, I am willing to take on the very suffering of Jesus to know my Savior, to know the God I serve, you see. There's an intimacy there's a desire, and he says, I consider all things lost. His main priority was knowing Christ more. Can we say the same? Do we want to really know God more? Or do the influence of others around us dictate otherwise? Our attitudes and habits, or lack of habits thereof, dictate otherwise. For Paul, to know Christ meant much more than knowing about him in the mind. It was knowing about him by reflecting it in his own life, you see. It's not just belief, but it's living it out. That's what Paul did. Sort of knowing God doesn't cut it folks. We come to really know God by obeying and living his word out. Becoming intimate with God should be the desire of all of his people. You see, maybe you're here this morning and you do know him intimately. That's the third point I want us to look at. There are many people who are connected and you continue doing so. You continue to encourage people around you. You mentor and you build up, whether it's young people or family or friends, or whoever it is around you, you continue to encourage them. Because we all have the same goal. We want to get to heaven. We want to please God. Let's grow together and build up. We talked about that in the last sermon series. But the more we know God, the more we will be connected to Him. Psalm 63, 1, David writes so beautifully, O oh God, you are my God, earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there's no water. Can we say that we thirst after God? That we get up on a Sunday morning and we just got to go to church, or else the rest of our week is going to be thrown off kilter. Can we say that we wake up in the morning and say, if I don't get in the Word this morning and start my day off right, then I'm just not going to be successful in what I do, and it's just really going to mess the balance of things up. Do we honestly say to ourselves that if I don't seek God in prayer and make that time daily and make that habit, well, then my life isn't going to be as 
I should if my decision making isn't going to be the best. Can we say that? David says, I thirst for you. I long for you. Those are strong words indicating a desire to know God intimately. As we read in 1 John 2, 3, John says very clearly, we know that we've come to know Him if we obey His commands. You see, the more that we are in His Word, the more we will know God, and the more personal our relationship will become with Him. I think it's interesting. The way we address God in prayer, or the way we, we you know, what title we use to call God or call upon His name, I think kind of tells us how intimately we know Him. You can tell when you're around people who's in tune with God and who isn't. You can tell by their priorities. You can tell how they handle themselves. They don't even have to say a word at the workplace, at school, at home, around. You can tell there's something different about that guy. There's something different about that girl. You can tell in their life. When they enter a room, it, it, it's a glow. You can tell. God wants us to experience His blessing. He wants us to be in tune with Him and connected. But it's all of us. As a matter or not, or whether or not we are going to be in His Word. Psalm 910 says, Those who know your name will trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. The experience of knowing God creates a deeper longing for more intimate knowledge of Him. So husbands and wives, when you get a better knowledge as you, you know, finding out whether you're going to marry that spouse, you know, as you spend time together. There's that moment where you think, do I want to spend more time with this person or do I want to not spend more time with this person? You should know that entering a relationship, right? Well, she, she's nagging and she's, you know, she's over the top and overbearing, but she's pretty, <laughs> you know. <laughs> not good. Not a good way to judge things. The very same when it comes to making us making that decision. If we want to know Him, then we're going to draw closer to Him. Because the more we know God, and we experience how He blesses us, and we experience how He answers our prayers, and we see prayers answered, when we look at our life and see a time when God comes through and provides, that draws within us an earnestness to seek Him even more, because we know what he's capable of doing for us if we just take the time to see it. Knowing God should consume us. It should be our motivating factor in life. That's what makes every moment count, knowing the God we serve. Knowing that we serve a God who has sent his son to die for our sins and that though life is not guaranteed, we have no idea what happens when we leave the doors. We know where we will spend eternity because of the promise he gives us through his son Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. God is not playing hide and seek, folks. God doesn't say find me and then you've got to look a little harder. God's right there. He doesn't go away. God doesn't move. There's no, you know, it's not a, uh, it, it's not a complicated thing for us. It's just a matter of us opening his word and, and seeking him. Because knowing him better brings about true change in our lives. Knowing God changes everything. When we have an intimate relationship with God, we're empowered to heal past hurt. We live in a broken world. And maybe you're hurting here this morning. Maybe your marriage isn't the best. Maybe your family life really is awful and it's crummy. Maybe people have, have broken you and they've broken their trust. And you're here and you're, you're jaded. I, I don't blame you. There's moments in life where we get jaded. And we're hurt and we think, what, what is there more to life? I want you to know God empowers you, empowers us to heal past hurt. God bends brokenness that this world can't. Maybe you're here and it's hard to forgive someone. You've been hurt and you know it and you even maybe see them every Sunday or you see them in your family or the workplace and you think, how in the world can I get past this forgiveness? God empowers us to forgive the unforgivable. Maybe you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ. Or you turn from Christ and you say, you know what? I am such a sinner now. Or I am such a horrible person. There's no way of being able to change now. Folks, I want you to know God empowers us to change who we are by what He gives us. You see. Do you really know God? 
I hope and pray, our goal this morning is that if we are here today and we truly believe that God exists and you truly believe who He is and what He says He'll do, then I hope and pray that it's our goal to begin knowing Him intimately.